Brown Brothers in for the Californians. And the lineup you'll see there, Sean Moran on the inside, the most uh, polished race winner, first time out. He's in the white helmet color. Next to him, we have Peter Collins, England skipper, who had a fall first time. Grid three has Kelly Moran. He's in yellow and black for America. And on the outside, Kenny Carter, who won his first race. Heat six. 17, we remind you the score, the test the Americans really must win, and it really has looked in these last two races, although they are settling down, they've weighed up the Foxhall Heath track, and they really have been piling on the points. Let's see what the Moran boys do against this gritty Nordic partnership, Carter from Halifax, Collins from Bellevue, Manchester, away they go, and it looks like Kelly Moran's got clear, and so too has Sean, and coming through on the inside is Harley's Collins, not finding a hole, Carter's at the back, and the Americans are really getting into full gallop. Sean Moran has broken clear of Brother Kelly. Third place is Collins, and it's a bit disappointing for England. Carter, so dominant in the third test at pool. Really only just moving through into third place. Collins, while a shadow of the man we've seen so many times at ITV, as Kelly Carter moves up to challenge the Moran brothers. Got a lot of work to do, a lot of ground to make up. So Sean Moran, Kelly Moran looking comfortable. And there is Peter Collins at the back. And the manager Mike Bordsley may well be tempted to bring in a reserve because PC looking most uncomfortable and almost what a quarter of a lap behind. That's bad news for England. And the Moran brothers kick on for home. This is last corner to certainly navigate theirs. Five more points to the Americans and they are beginning to disappear over the horizon. So Sean Moran was the winner, Kelly Moran made the jump, stayed with him. So that means that the Americans have now taken 14 points from the last three heats. Well, the England captain, Peter Collins, has just left the pits for the dressing room. And as he left, he really gave the reason why he's riding so badly. It's because his leathers are too tight. He says he's put on some new leathers. They're far too tight. He can't move on his bike. And he's going to get changed before he goes out for the next race. Well, there's the score. The Americans really in command after six heats. And we have Dave Jessup, who was a last place last time out. Be anxious to improve on that. DJ on the inside in red, just uh, doing a bit of potato digging there, as you can see. Next to him, we will have John Cook, who has a third and a second place improving. He's in yellow and black grid two. Grid three has Chris Morton with a third place and a second place. And on the outside, it's Bobby Schwartz with five points. And uh, there's Peter Collins changing his letters. That really is a remarkable story. As we pick up again, heat number seven. And that's an even break. It looks like Jessup from the inside. Jessup's away. Schwartz going around the outside. And Schwartz, who will have the drop? It is Schwartz. And Cook is nosing up the inside as the Americans really get the fit between their teeth. both at the front and the back, with Schwartz and Jessup up front, and third place now, John Cook, holding off the challenges of Chris Morton. Into the third lap, still Bobby Schwartz, what an inspirational skipper this lad is from Reading. He's in front, Jessup is second, now Cook has shaken off Morton, and again the English who have looked so much more in control at both Swindon and Poole in the second and third test. Maybe it's us, the television boys, because at Wimbledon, the first test, you remember, they were pretty lackluster. And Schwartz seems to be slowing, or maybe it's Jessup who is catching him. We're in the last lap now. Will Schwartz hold on? He will. He wins in second place, Jessup. Third is Cook. Americans are going further ahead. Well, there is Bobby Schwartz, Boogaloo, of course, with the Reading Racers who is the reigning World Pairs champion, along with Sigalos, and really takes this captaincy seriously. He says the Americans have got one big ingredient, the English lads have a nice team spirit. They're certainly showing it tonight. They're really in there battling. Well, what a remarkable transformation in this fourth test match. After three heats, England were 10-8 up, but the USA have taken eight points from the last four races to England six, and there's the score. You can see as we come in to heat eight, with the lineup looking like from the inside. There it is, Dennis Sigalos.
the Ipswich number one and skipper, who really is a track specialist here at Foxhall. He's next to him, Kenny Carter. He'll be in the red helmet colour in grid two. Grid three has Lance King, not too happy an evening for the young Credley Heathen. He has one fall and one point to his credit. And Peter Collins in his uh, new loose leathers, let's hope uh, he can loosen up a bit here in heat eight. We could do with some inspiration from PC in the England camp. No score so far. There he is. He's in the blue helmet colour and he'll be on the outside here. And England have got to find their rhythm and stop this rot. They're now 10 points adrift. And this is heat number eight. And they'll be looking to Collins from the outside and Carter from grid number two. Here we go. Heat eight, they settle down. Referee Frank Epton hits the button. And it's King who breaks. And so too has Sigalos and the Americans again have had a sensational getaway. Third place is Carter and Collins is at the back. And this again is the winning score. It's a nice piece of cornering from Carter. And Carter split up the Americans really boldly and impudently went between the pair of them. He's in second place and chasing hard after Sigalos. Third place, King. And King and Sigalos has some tempest to his brushes. And that's another fine piece of maneuvering from Kenny Carter. Really tucked his head down, gritted his teeth and went, split up the Americans, then went past the Gullis. That takes a bit of doing here on his home British League track. And Kenny Carter's in front and Collins is battling. And the Englishmen really are having a go now into the last lap. And the real battles for the odd point at the back, you can see there the distance. There's Carter up front, Sigalos is second. And where is Collins? Can he possibly get up on Lance King? No, he's going to. So the Americans have shared the spoil. And that really was some fine overtaking from Kenny Carter. Well, there is Carter. And, uh, well, the little Yorkshire Terrier obviously felt that things were swinging away there, determined to show that he still is world class. Split the Americans first of all, then went past Cigar, swept by Cigar. Lost. That takes some doing here at Foxhall Heath. You can see Carter in the red helmet kind of gets between the Americans and now going after Cigar. Lost. Now, Cigar Lost has moved out to mid-track to counter an attack from the outside. Carter cleverly has switched back inside. Nowhere really to go for Dennis Sigalos. No drive there. Carter has found the drive and the inspiration down the inside. Goes past him quite sweetly and quite beautifully. Well, Kenny, it was quite a feat getting past both the Americans there. What do you recall from that? Well, uh, I've been having a lot of problems tonight. I was looking at my first race when Peter Collins fell off and stopped because my bike stopped also. And then I rode my other bike in the rear run and won that race. And then my next race, we swapped tyres and I, I struggled in that one I was last and I managed to come third. So we went back to the other one and come from the back and won the last race, so I'm pleased. How did you manage to get past there? So, just in there, I kept the throttle on and all worked out good for me. Midway through, America still with that 14-point lead. And Wally Morsi, the England manager, has to start bringing his reserves in and does so here in Heat 10 because the rider in blue replacing Peter Collins, who's had a disastrous night, will be reserve John Davis, who is just the character to respond to this situation. In fact, uh, John has come in in each of the first three test matches and won his first outing. The lineup on the inside, Bobby Schwartz in white. Next to him, John Davis. Grid three has John Cook and on the outside, it's Kenny Carter. So can Davis stem the flow of America's successes? Not one of his happier hunting grounds here at Foxhall Heath. He's in blue, remember, grid two. Carter has been by far England's most successful campaigner. Two race wins so far. Here we go, heat number 10. And it is the Americans who jump out. Schwartz leads it. Second place is Carter, third is Davis, and now Carter chasing after Schwartz. He doesn't like it's here, Bobby Schwartz very much. They had some words last year, and Carter is on the inside of Schwartz. The battle for third place looks like being won by Davis, with John Cook on the outside of him. There is the battle. Cook's gone by now. It's up to Carter to burst on the inside of Schwartz, and here he comes, and that's a tremendous piece of speedway action there, that picture, as Carter tries to bore a hole through the inside of Bobby Schwartz and Schwartz holds him out. Now he kind of tried the outside run. And again, oh, Schwartz leaving him nowhere to go there. And they're not giving very much away up there in front. Into the last lap, can kind of get up in this last 328 yards. Third place is Cook. And Carter really showing all his northern tenacity. 
but Schwartz is holding him, and Bobby has ridden a marvellous tactical race here, and his awareness has been tremendous. He's going to win it. Win for Schwartz, second place Parker, third is Cook on his back wheel, and the gamble with John Davis hasn't paid off there in heat 10. Schwartz looking back, as we mentioned, not a lot of love lost between him and Kenny Carter. Schwartz once threatened to kick Carter all over the pits, and Carter has said that uh, Schwartz, well, he's a big mate. He's a pretty big rider as well, too. He did now 16 points of difference. The Americans really in command of this fourth test match. And as we come into Heat 11, well, what an inexperienced England pair in Neil Collins coming in for Michael Lee, who has mechanical trouble. Neil, 22, and his partner, Simon Wig, he's 22 as well. And really, these two have come into the international limelight this year, both graduates of National League Speedway. Collins with uh, Edinburgh up there in Scotland and Simon Wig with Weymouth. Now they both, of course, with British League clubs, Collins with Leicester and Wig with Cradley Heath. Lot of responsibility on their shoulders here. Well, the drama beginning to build up. We come in again for the start of Heat 11 on the inside, Neil Collins. Next to him, Lance King. Grid 3 has Simon Wig on the outside. Dennis Segalos, here we go, Heat 11. And Segalos has made a flyer from the outside and King has gone with him. So it's the Americans in front. King is in second place. Third place is Wig, and can Wig turn on the magic because England are really struggling now. Wig brought the nice down and pool with some tremendous wide riding, and he's got it all to do. It's his crazy his teammate Lance King in front of him, and here comes Simon Wig to try and split up the Americans. Sigalos disappearing out of sight up front. There's Dennis Sigalos. Where's the battle for second place as Wig swings back inside, and King is catching every move. tremendous action shot and King's in trouble King is out of it that's unlucky for the American seems to be holding on it looks like the bike is going again there's still a cigar that's going into the last lap second place now Wig Neil Collins is third Lance King may just have a punch or he may just have dropped a chain the bike still seems to be going this is Neil Collins well the bike is going very tough and hard Sigalos wins at second place Simon Wig third Neil Collins and England, they're lucky to split the heat. Well, there's the score after 11 heats. We knew the Americans loved the Ipswich track. They've never been beaten here. And we're wondering now if they're going to run up a record total in these test series. The most points any side has ever scored is 69. It's very much within their sights here as we come on for heat number 12. And looking across the lineup from the inside there, Sean Moran, who is unbeaten and who has, it must be said, looked invincible in his first three rides. He's on the inside in the white helmet colour. Next to him, Dave Jessup, two second places in the last. He'll be in grid two. Grid three will have, but there's Dave Jessup just adjusting his face mask and visor. Still hasn't won a race. There is Kelly Moran, who has got his act up together after a coconut first time out. Two second places behind brother Sean and this partnership again has been devastating for the Americans and on the outside it will be Chris Morton let's have a look at him there's uh, Chris Morton from Bellevue really prefers the bigger tracks where he can screw it all on here he is constricted but he'll have a go he'll be in blue on the outside so heat number 12 and if a revival is to come from England it's got a front pretty soon and this is the Americans toughest pairing we'll watch for Sean Brown on the inside it's an even great Sean Moran it is who gets to the corner. Kelly got a fearful knock there by Dave Jessup. No uh, mercy at all. So it's Sean Moran in front. Second place now Morton. Kelly Moran's got back in contact. And that's the way they peel off down past our commentary position. Into lap two with still Sean Moran in front. Then Chris Morton. Dave Jessup is having to withstand some pressure from Kelly Moran, who I don't think will be too happy with that first corner. Here's Kelly. He did take a ball up. He did well to contain this is the battle up front, and here comes Chris Morton. Can he find a way past Sean Moran? Sean takes a look over his inside shoulder, knows that Brother Kelly's at the back. He can do little to aid him. This has got a head from home. As Kelly comes through on the inside of Dave Jessup. The battle for third place. There it is now. And as Kelly Moran got the drop, I think he might have. There's Sean Moran in front. The big battles for the odd point. Kelly Moran on the inside. Jessup almost going through the boards. America are going to gain some advantage from Heat 12. Sean Moran wins it. Morton is second, and Kelly Moran, who I think was a little upset with his cavalier treatment at the first corner, really gets up for the odd point. 
What happened at the beginning there, Kelly, first of all? Well, I thought I could get around Dave Jessup going around the outside of him. But coming into the corner, I found that I was running out a bit of a room, so I tried to come back underneath, but I just didn't have the horsepower to catch up with him. Okay, right here, you can see there I am out of gate three here. And I thought I could come in between him and go around the outside, but DJ here was just trying to get out in the dirt here, and I just got more not pushed out, but just ran out of room right here, and I got left high and dry. So I thought right here I could come back underneath him, but I just pretty much left more or less high and dry. So I just had to work on him later on and wait for him to go wide. Well, Sean, you're, you're certainly the man of this test so far because you've got maximum points and really coming out of the gate very well. Well, I'm glad I'm doing it tonight. I didn't uh, fare too well last night, but uh, we're hoping to make it up tonight so we can have a two-all draw and, uh, of course, any cider at uh, Sheffield. Well, there it is, the score. Really, it's all over Father Shiting. We've had 14 heats. The Americans just really need one point to make absolutely sure of leveling up the series here at Ipswich. And we'll look across the lineup for heat 15. It looks as though Peter Collins, the really dreadfully disappointing England captain, is going to stay in in the blue helmet colour. What a night for PC. One he'll want to forget. Of course, he started with uh, new leathers that were too tight, and he hasn't really loosened up since. There's Peter Collins, and I know he'll be anxious to retrieve something from this fourth test. We we'll look at the lineup for heat 15. Carter on the inside. Next to him, Sean Moran, unbeaten in four starts. Grid three has the uh, really disappointing Peter Collins in blue, and on the outside, Kelly Moran in yellow and black for the USA. Heat 15. The Americans really need one point to make absolutely sure of winning this fourth test, and that was a ragged start. And Sean Moran made the most of it. He goes clear. Second place is Carter. Third is Collins at the back. Kelly Moran. And now, Kenny Carter will chase after Sean Moran, I'm sure. But Moran has not made a mistake in front of Kenny. Moran has moved to third place, and Collins is at the back. What a sad story it has been for the England skipper here at Ipswich. Sean Moran, well, again, the Americans seem to have a real world-class rider in this lad. He's come along so well, originally with Hull in the British League, now with Sheffield. He's, what, only 21. This is his 27th appearance for his country, and he has looked in a class of his own. Second place is Carter, still trying hard, not really gaining much on him. And here is the action around the first two corners here of this 328-yard Ipswich circuit, and the Americans are going to wrap it all up here. Appropriately, it's Sean Moran who makes sure the Test Series goes to a fifth decider. It'll be on his home track at Sheffield. Second place there was Carter. Third was Kelly Moran. And the Americans, well, they came here to win, and they've done exactly that, and they've done it with style and flair.